book, you really talk about this, this teeter totter effect, right? right. Um, the, the idea that what goes up must come down. Will you just start with sort of the basic fundamentals of what you describe as the pleasure pain balance? We'll get to anhedonia, we'll get to the paradox, but you just kind of set this up me mechanistically for our listeners. Sure. So to me, one of the most important findings in neuroscience in the past 50 to 100 years is that the same parts of the brain that process pleasure also process pain. So those are co-located and they work like opposite sides of a balance. So if you imagine that in your brain, in that special part of your brain called the reward circuit, there's like a teeter-totter, you know, in a kid's playground, a beam on a central fulcrum. And when that, when that teeter-totter, that balance is at rest, it's level with the ground. When we do something pleasurable, it tilts one way. And when we do something painful or have an ex experience of pain, it, it tilts the opposite way. One of the overarching rules governing this balance, which we have now discovered through very interesting neuroscientific methods, whether in animals or humans, is that that balance wants to stay level. And with any deviation from neutrality, our brains are going to work very hard to restore a level balance or what neuroscientists call homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So let's take, for example, if I eat a piece of chocolate, I really like chocolate, my balance tips to the side of pleasure, I get a little release of dopamine, our reward neurotransmitter in my reward circuit in the brain, and yay, I feel good. But no sooner has that happened then I get these little neuroadaptation gremlins hopping on the pain side of my balance to bring it level again. But the gremlins like it on the balance, so they don't hop off as soon as I've achieved homeostasis. They stay on until I've tipped an equal and opposite amount to the side of pain. And that's that moment of wanting one more piece of chocolate or the come down or the after effect or the hangover. Now, if I can, I, can I ask about yeah. this real quick? Yeah. This is super yeah. interesting because just yesterday I was listening. I'm a big fan of, of your colleague, Andrew Huberman, and his yeah. podcast. Just yesterday I was listening to the episode on sugar yes. and sugar cravings. And I'm going to forget the exact details of this, you know, the, the mechanism behind this. I'm just a psychologist. But essentially, I think he described something similar where when you have that, whatever the sugar is, right, sucrose, fructose, that you get, I think, kind of an immediate satisfaction, but that satisfaction really only lasts, he said, I think somewhere around 15 minutes or so. Is that a similar sort of mechanism that you're describing here? Like we got our satisfaction, now it's tipping back the other way and kind of saying, hey, you want more of this thing to bring me back into balance. Yes, that, that's exactly okay. it. And, and people can definitely get addicted to sugar. It's a potent releaser of dopamine. And again, the key here is that with sugar or any other rewarding substance or behavior, you get a release of dopamine, but your brain is going to immediately respond to those increased levels of dopamine by downregulating endogenous dopamine production and dopamine receptors, not just to baseline level, but below baseline level before going back to baseline, which is homeostasis. And again, if you imagine that as you've got a pleasure pain balance, you get a release of dopamine, it tips the side of pleasure, the gremlins hop on the pain side and they tip you to the side of pain. That's the come down, the dopamine deficit state, that moment of wanting to get out of that uncomfortable state by reaching for another bit of sugar or whatever it is. Right. But if you wait, right, the gremlins right. pop off and homeostasis is restored. So the key point here is that the way that the brain restores a level balance is first by tipping an equal and opposite amount to whatever the initial stimulus was. It doesn't just go back to baseline mm -hmm. after a deviation. It goes from the deviation to, to the initial pleasurable experience to pain, wanting more of that pleasurable experience to a level balance. And is this proportionate generally? You know, what, whatever, whatever the spike is, you're going to see kind of an equal come down? So that is what the experiments show, that okay. typically it's proportional. Okay. And it's, it can be qualitatively, it's, what's interesting is it's, it's like qualitatively potentially not exactly the opposite of whatever the initial stimulus is, but mm -hmm. it's broadly speaking, a kind of reinforcing or positive experience followed by a negative or aversive experience. Okay, okay. And, and how does the, well, can I just ask, how does the baseline over time um, shift with those spikes and downward well, inverses, inver inversions of the spike? So, 
will the baseline generally with more and more dopamine stimulation over time go down? Now, I'm, I'm thinking baseline here is general state of mind, general mood, or is there a way in which it goes up or does it generally, does homeostasis kind of always restore it to roughly the same baseline? Right. So now you're getting to the key of what right. happens in the brain as people become mm -hmm. addicted. That essentially, once those gremlins have been formed in response to, uh, you know, a, a rewarding stimulus, they might hop off the balance, but they never entirely go away. And mm -hmm. they like it on the balance. So they're waiting in the wings to hop on again. So that means with repeated exposure to the same or similar reinforcing stimulus, those gremlins start to multiply. And over time, you start to get more and more gremlins hopping on the pain side of the balance, which means that with repeated exposure, that initial deviation to the side of pleasure gets weaker and shorter in duration. And that after response to pain gets stronger and longer right. in duration. So eventually you end up with enough gremlins on the pain side of the balance to fill this whole room. They're camped out there. They're not going anywhere. And that's when we've changed our hedonic or joy set point. Mm. So when people, when people become addicted, what's essentially happened is they're walking around with a pleasure pain balance tilted to the side of pain, mm. right? So that means when they need, that means, first of all, they need more and more to get the same effect, right? Not to feel good, but just to feel normal and level the balance. And when they're not using, they're walking around with a balance tilted to the side of pain, experiencing the universal symptoms of withdrawal from any addictive substance, which are anxiety, irritability, insomnia, depression, and intrusive thoughts of wanting to use. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. 